Hi, my name is Erin, and I work for the Forest Service here at the Lake Tahoe Basin Management Unit. Nearly 78% of the land within the basin falls under Forest Service management and includes varying habitats such as subalpine forests and wetlands. With such a wide range of ecological diversity, the Forest Service frequently partners with conservation organizations to effectively study and manage our delicate ecosystem. Since 2004, the Sugar Pine Foundation has worked with the Forest Service to research and restore Tahoe's white pine species. But why? What is happening to these trees exactly? And how can we help successfully restore them? To answer these questions, I virtually caught up with Tressa Gibbard, Program Manager from the Sugar Pine Foundation. The Sugar Pine Foundation was founded to save the sugar pines and other white pines. White pines are five needle pines. Um, and in Tahoe, we have three species, sugar pine, western white, and white bark pines. And all white pines um, are being affected by a non-native, invasive, and incurable fungus called white pine blister rust. White pine blister rust was accidentally introduced in North America over 100 years ago. Since then, the pathogen has managed to spread across the continent through a rather complex process. The way the blister rust fungus works is that it has to um, be harbored on an alternate host. It doesn't actually spread from tree to tree. Okay, alternate host, let's break down the science light version of how this process works. As a fungus, blister rust loves cool, damp weather, and so it only infects trees during the fall. A specialized spore, called a basidiospore, is blown by the wind and lands on a white pine species. The spore enters the needle stomata, which is basically like pores on skin. After successful infiltration, the fungus gets down to business, stealing the tree's nutrients and slowly killing its needles. The infected branch, or branches, begin to turn red as the fungus advances. After it reaches the tree trunk, a yellow, oozy canker forms that's filled with blisters. At this point, the fungus has reached a new stage of its life. The canker explodes releasing a new type of spore into the atmosphere in the spring. This new spore is crucial to the blister rust survival as it enables the fungus to infiltrate a different species within the ribes family. Common ribes plants include gooseberries and currants. This is where the fungus spends the summer living off of the ribes plant as it continues to develop and grow. By late summer, the alternate host plant is ready to drop its leaves meaning the blister rust is ready to move on. The fungus life cycle is now complete with a new wave of basidiospores ready and capable of infecting white pines. Sadly, blister rust is a terminal disease for white pines. When a pathogen like blister rust weakens a tree, um, it just makes that tree even less drought resistant and even less resistant to beetles. Blister rust, pine beetle grazing, and drought? This sounds pretty bad for the trees, right, Teresa? Basically, it's an epidemic. The infection rate of trees with blister rust is unsustainable. Like, these trees cannot reproduce fast enough to keep up with the die-off. White pines are ecologically important in Lake Tahoe, providing everything from habitats for different species to filtration services that keep Tahoe blue. How can we help these trees manage these threats? What options do we have? Sugar pines and western white pines are the only two white pine species to have a known major gene resistance to blister rust. And that means that 5% or less of trees, sugar pines and white, western white pines out there, actually have a major gene resistance that can be inherited by, from one generation to the next um, to the fungus. Scientists surmise that at some point in the way, way back machine, sugar and western white pines actually developed a resistance to a fungi similar to blister rust. However, through evolutionary processes, only 5% or so inherit that gene today. To help save white pines from blister rust fungus, the Sugar Pine Foundation went searching for the trees with the right genes. We discovered 66 
resistant, MGR resistant, MGR means uh, major gene resistant parent trees or seed trees in and around the Tahoe Basin. We collect all the cones we can off of those resistant trees and we give half of them to the Forest Service and the other half we send to a nursery. Once resistant seeds are harvested, organizations like the Sugar Pine Foundation plant saplings to restore the forest. To help these baby trees survive the dry summer, volunteers water them at different sites around the Tahoe Basin. Though Tahoe's white pines, especially white bark, still face an uncertain future, the dedicated work of land managers, scientists, volunteers, and more helps ensure their continued presence in this special ecosystem.